I'm so glad that you can join us here at Living Life. And I hope that you will learn to be in the presence of God and that you would take uh, advantage of this time where we can study His Word and that He would speak truth uh, into your life. You know, have you ever had one of your possessions uh, vandalized? I remember when uh, my children were younger and during that time I was you know, writing out the Bible in, onto my own notebook. I wanted to have a copy of my own uh, New Testament. And so whenever I had free time, you know, during the evenings or whenever I was at home, I would spend time just copying the Bible um, onto this notebook. And so my kids, since they were young, they would observe and watch what their daddy was doing. Uh, well, one day when I was away and when I came back, um, I noticed that uh, one of my children had was trying to imitate me. And so they took, but they took my Bible and they took a pen and they started writing um, all over my, my Bible because they wanted to be like their dad. And so when I looked uh, at my Bible and I saw all these scribblings, it was very hard for me uh, to be mad because, you know, they're just children. But I can imagine, you know, what it must have been like uh, in the Old Testament if you were to take something very sacred and very holy, and if you were to vandalize it, you know, what would happen? And so that's something that we'll be looking at as we look at uh, the passage for us today. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 14 through chapter 6, verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, When anyone is unfaithful to the Lord by sinning unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things, they are to bring to the Lord as a penalty a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value in silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. It is a guilt offering. They must make restitution for what they have failed to do in regard to the holy things, pay an additional penalty of a fifth of its value, and give it all to the priest. The priest will make atonement for them with the ram as a guilt offering, and they will be forgiven. If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though they do not know it, they are guilty and will be held responsible. They are to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the wrong they have committed unintentionally, and they will be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. They have been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, if anyone sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving a neighbor about something entrusted to them or left in their care or about something stolen or if they cheat their neighbor or if they find lost property and lie about it or if they swear falsely about any such sin that people may commit. When they sin in any of these ways and realize their guilt, they must return what they have stolen or taken by extortion or what was entrusted to them, or the lost property they found, or whatever it was they swore falsely about. They must make restitution in full, add a fifth of the value to it, and give it all to the owner on the day they present their guilt offering. And as a penalty, they must bring to the priest, that is, to the Lord, their guilt offering, a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priests will make atonement for them before the Lord, and they will be forgiven for any of the things they did that made them guilty. And so if you've been following along with us in the study in the book of Leviticus, uh, you know that previously we had talked about sin offering, uh, and now God is moving on to discuss and sharing about what it means for guilt offering. Uh, and so the Israelites were made known whether they sinned um, intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, we see here that uh, they need to come clean through the sacrifice of an animal. And so um, now that they're talking about this guilt offering, it was essentially the same procedure as the sin offering, except there was something that was different was that 
it was sinning against in regards to a holy thing. Uh, so those, this spoke about you know, desecration, uh, meaning that uh, concerning the tabernacle or anything associated with it. And so after the sin is assessed, um, the offender had to bring a ram as its guilt offering. And so he would sacrifice this um, and to take place, to take his place of what sin and crime that he's committed or, or she committed. And so when holy things were desecrated in some way, uh, a mere sin offering was not enough. And so it says that here restitution was required. And so they had to pay back what was lost. And on top of that, they had to add an additional 20 percent. Uh, so with this guilt offering, the priest is allowed to keep what was the hide of the bull that was sacrificed. Uh, what stood out about this guilt offering is that you have to pay back whatever damage uh, was done, whether this was um, unintentional or even if it was deliberate. Uh, either way, if it was against God or if it was against man. And so uh, this guilt offering for sin or for against others is also addressed. Uh, at the end of chapter 5, it focuses on this guilt offering against the Lord's holy things. And chapter 6 focuses on uh, defrauding another person, uh, which is also recognized as being unfaithful to the Lord. And so the sins that are listed seem to be related to the type of uh, embezzlement or theft or extortion. Um, you know, I was talking with uh, a church member and they happen to work with the Department of Revenue. And so as I was talking, they mentioned that uh, more and more cases of fraud are coming up uh, frequently. And so people are being bought into these scams. And I can testify because, you know, recently I got a phone call saying that my social security number was compromised. And so I had to call back this number um, or else uh, my uh, secur security number was being used for bank accounts in Texas. And so they said that if I didn't want my uh, security number to be suspended, I had to make this call. And so they made it sound very urgent. And so I called them and this person was telling me that, you know, if my name was so-and-so, and then they asked me, can I verify what my social security number was? And I started to get uh, suspicious because, you know, if they knew, why would they be asking me? And so uh, immediately I just, you know, hung up the phone. But I realized later on that many people fall for this and um, hundreds, millions of dollars have been lost uh, because people uh, gave in to these scams. And so it's important that we realize, you know, how sinful this world is and seeing how uh, these things are taking place um, here and all across the world. And even my wife, uh, she also uh, got a call from these scammers as well. And so we see here the sinfulness, the fallenness um, of this world and how all this is taking place. Uh, and so we need to see here that you know, the book of Leviticus can be challenging, but we see here the detailed demands of the sacrifice uh, for the sin that was committed. And it makes us appreciate um, that because of uh, what we've done uh, for our sins, that Christ had taken our sins. Uh, and so as we reflect, as we look at what the book of Leviticus is trying to address, and I hope that we will take some time to reflect. Uh, perhaps maybe some of you are so busy with life that you don't have time to pause and see the kinds of sins that you've committed against God. And so perhaps this is a good way for maybe you to take time to journal, uh, to write down the things that you've done against God. And as you write those things, uh, may it lead you to repentance. Uh, may it lead you to be sorrowful for what you have done uh, because that is what was required. Uh, this is why this was in place in, as we read in the book of Leviticus to show us, uh, to bring to our attention um, our fallenness. And so uh, let's be reminded that we live in a sinful world. We live in a time where sin is all around us. And so let us not be numb uh, to that sin. 
Uh, but let's learn and pray that our hearts will continue to be sensitive and be made aware of our sins, be made aware of our surroundings so that we can come before God with a pure and upright heart, which is what He requires for us as His children. So as we see in our lives, there are many different types of sins that we commit, uh, whether it be through our words, whether it be through our actions, or even in our thoughts. And all of these are divided into different departments and required different types of sacrifice. And so as we see how detailed, as we see the different varieties and what types of animals were required uh, for these sacrifices, um, makes me so thankful that we have just one sacrifice now that is through Jesus that takes over all precedence over every sin in our lives, uh, every detail that we have done, um, God took for us on that cross. And so uh, let us always hold on to that gospel and let's always give thanks to our, for, to our Lord for what He has done for us. Uh, let us pray. Uh, God, we thank you, Lord. Um, Lord, that we know that we are sinners. We know, Father, that we have fallen short. But we thank you that you lift us up, and we thank you, God, that you lead us by the hand. And so uh, help us, God, to uh, appreciate what you have done uh, by sending us your Son. And so uh, until all the world has heard this gospel, I pray that we will carry it out um, as our mission, as we uh, share, as we bring it to different parts of the world. And so we lift this up, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience. 